Welcome. Can you please give a massive round of applause to Mohammed and Sarah? <laughs> So I'm here to share my story and my story starts in Preston on my way to university. But who am I? Well, my name is Mohammed Salim Patel and I had a dream. My dream was to work in television. It was actually to be a TV presenter. And my story is about how one woman didn't believe that I could do it. So there I am. I'm walking to university. I've got these big university buildings on one side, thousands of students on the other side. And I actually felt really small because of all these big buildings around me and all these people that were surrounding me. I was there to speak to lecturers about me wanting to study broadcast journalism. But I'm blind, so I can only see colours and shapes and they wanted to talk to me about the course. So I had my new shoes on, a smart shirt, and I walked into this big building. It was so big actually that you could hear all the echoes when every, every time someone was speaking. We met a woman at reception and walked into this room it had a round table. I was quite nervous, but feeling confident. I sat down and they started asking me questions. And the first question was, well, why do you want to study broadcast journalism? So I explained, I love telling stories and I've always enjoyed watching television, watching news, and I'd love to be a part of that. And then the lady that was in charge of the broadcast journalism course, she asked me, she said, so how much can you actually see? And I explained to her, look, I've got a degenerative eye condition, which means that as I got older, my vision got worse and now I can only just see colours and outlines of shapes. But when I was younger, I could see much better and I remember what television looks like and how things work. Then there's this silence. Now remember, I can't see. So I don't know, has everybody left the room? Are they talking to each other? What's, what's actually going on? And then the lady that asked me the question, she spoke up and she said, I'm sorry, but I don't think you can do my course. It's going to be too visual for you and too demanding. My heart sunk. I slumped down in my chair and I was really sad. And I was thinking to myself, is, is that it now? Is that my dream over? I can't do what I wanted to do. Didn't know what to say. And then another lady spoke and she said, but you can study international journalism instead. That's not got any broadcast elements. So I just said, yeah, that's fine. I'll study international journalism. Now I walked into this building feeling confident, but I walked out feeling really sad and I didn't know what to do. And remember how at the start I said I had a dream to work in television? Well, I still had that dream at that point, but my dream had changed. It was to prove that woman wrong. She didn't know me. She'd only met me for 20 minutes. She didn't know what I was capable of. So I wanted to prove her wrong. I studied international journalism. I had no choice. But I worked really hard. I got the best marks in all of my assignments and when I came to my final year at university, I was in that same building with all those echoes. And that lady that said I couldn't study her course, she approached me. And she said, I hear you've been doing really well. You've been getting great marks and I'd love to help you. And I was a bit surprised. This is a woman that didn't allow me on her course, now offering me her help. But it's because I was working really hard. and. I needed to get employment, so she was introducing me to people at the BBC, and that's exactly what I needed. So I accepted the help, and she introduced me to people at BBC Local Radio, and that actually allowed me to get my first job as a local radio reporter in BBC Radio Lancashire. Whilst I was there, there was a scheme open at the BBC where they train you to be a multi-platform journalist. So they teach you how to write news articles for the website, how to work in radio, and also how to work in television. And all the training went really well until it came to the TV bit. You know, I didn't have confidence. I didn't know what to do because that woman had taken it out of me. And I explained what happened to the, the lady that was looking after the training course. And she said, look, we can find a way to make it work. And we did. When I do reporting, the cameraman claps at the lens so I know which direction to look at. When we do editing, I get someone to help me. And there's ways that we've managed to work things through. Whilst I was on the training scheme, there was a programme called North West Tonight that I got placed at for six weeks. And it's the regional TV news programme for the whole of the North West. And I really enjoyed my time there. It was great because, you know, I was doing reports, I was working in live television, and it was what I always wanted to do. And I ended up getting a job there. So I work there now as their planning producer. So I sit every day and I plan the next day's news programme. So I arrange all the stories, 
arrange all the interviews, find the stories, and then brief the reporters and presenters. I also work as a reporter for them, and that's given me great opportunities to meet so many different and interesting people. I've met Tyson Fury, Callum Smith, Natasha Jonas, so many good people, and that's all because of my job. And that's all because I didn't let that one woman who said to me I couldn't do something actually make that become a reality. Because only I knew what I could do. Only I knew what I was capable of doing, and I didn't let her stop me. And you guys should never let anyone stop you either. You know, only you know what you're capable of doing. And sometimes you might come across people in life that don't have the belief in you that you have in yourself. But never let anyone take that belief away from you because you can get the career that you want. And it could be anything. You don't have to go into journalism, but there's so many jobs out there and only you know what you're capable of. You don't have to have a disability either. Everyone's got strengths, everyone's got weaknesses, but we can all achieve what we want to do. And I, I did that. You know, I have a motto that I might be blind, but I have a vision and I wanted to share that vision to that woman and to every one of you here today. So, my story started in Preston. It finished with making my dream come true, and I've shared that with you here today. Okay, a huge round of applause for the highest school. And again, thank you so much for listening so politely and respectfully. It genuinely means a lot to us. So, just like before, you've got the opportunity now to ask whatever questions you want. So, stick your hand up, the football will come to you. And just like before, it would be great to know your name as well. Hi. Hey, yeah. Mark. Hey, yeah. Uh, what did your parents do to help you? I don't have any. Aww. You love people that look after you, Mark, and that's what my parents did for me. They just gave me belief and confidence. They said, look, you can do whatever you want to do, and uh, they never stopped me. You know, they knew that I couldn't see, they knew that I'd find things difficult, but they gave me the belief to do whatever I wanted to do, and if I had a hard day or I struggled with something, they'd just talk to me about it, they'd give me the support I needed. And that allowed me to always be confident and always push forward. Great question. Hello, my name's Louis Blue, and uh, did you ever want to give up on your dream? I never did, and that's why I made it come true, because even though there were people that didn't think I could make my own dream come true, you know, I wanted to make that happen. So that gave me the motivation and the confidence to just keep pushing forward and keep breaking down those walls and, you know, make my dream come true. Sometimes it gets frustrating. Sometimes you think, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this, but you've just got to swerve past that and just carry on walking forward and you'll get to where you want to get to in the end. Another excellent question, thank you. Please keep them coming. I can see a hand up in the in the middle on this side. Going with the pass the parcel situation with the football. <laughs> So I'm actually scared of dogs, so it's not good for me to have a guide dog. Um, but I have a support worker and they help me kind of get around and I use a white cane as well. So I was born with a condition that may, meant that as I get older my sight would get worse. For different people with the condition sometimes, you know, it happens very late on in life, sometimes it happens really early, uh, but for me my sight got worse when I was in my teenagers. Thank you for all of these questions, We've got time for one more question, so please make it a belter. Excuse me, um, did you ever have any doubts uh, about it? 
Um, I think sometimes when people say something to you and obviously they're you know older than you or they they've got like a powerful position or a job, then sometimes you kind of think uh, maybe they're right. But when you've got a dream or you know when you really want to do something, there's something inside you that says to you, "Nah, they're wrong," and you know it's it's your job then to to kind of you know not ignore them, but just maybe prove them wrong in the same way that I did, and you know. That very lady came and helped me. I think, honestly, if Mohammed could bottle his determination and sell it, then he would be a multi-millionaire. <laughs> it's so impressive. Thank you so much for all of your questions. They were really excellent.